Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. And welcome to a special episode of Projections because it is a momentous week in the world of virtual reality. Yes, we have the Oculus Quest, as do many of you. And we know this might be your very first headset. And so we wanted to help you get on board with this amazing ecosystem that you probably are brand new to. Um, a lot of these games are coming from the PC. So a lot of hardcore VR people have been doing this for years, maybe on PSVR, maybe on the PC. They're familiar with a lot of these titles. Um, and since so many have come over to the Quest, we wanted to share with you a few of our favorites. Yeah, we're gonna go through 10 picks uh, from the launch list. There are a bunch of free titles, a bunch of paid titles. These are a great, I think, starter pack to get into the Quest. And like we said, for mostly for people who, uh, for this, for them, this is their first, your first virtual reality device. So let's kick things off with what probably the most no-brainer, maybe the killer app for the Quest, uh, Beat Saber. You know what Beat Saber is, of course. You've probably seen the videos. Uh, you are holding two light swords, one in each hand, and slamming them, slicing through these blocks to the tune of some uh, slamming beats. That's right. Another $30 title is Journey of the Gods. And this is new to Quest. It's a wonderful four to five hour Zelda-like game where you're playing with a crossbow and a shield and you can switch back and forth between God mode where you're humongous and human form. And the game evolves over time. It's one of those games that I really appreciated in that you don't get in there and get this loop and know what the game's all about because it does change over the course of the time. And they did a great job with sound. Uh, a lot of the characters, they speak in this kind of simlish, which works very well to spark your imagination. Great game. I think both of those worth mentioning. They, while they are cross-platform, and actually everything on the list is going to be on the desktop Rift side in one form or another. Uh, both Journey of the Gods and Beat Saber really take advantage of the untethered VR experience. Beat Saber being able to set up and launch it anytime, anywhere, and share that that kind of makes it a real pass it around. Pass it around yeah. makes it a real a killer shared experience for VR. And then Journey of the Gods being able to jump around and dance and kind of deflect and, and do some sword play with yep. these giant creatures, uh, that is so much more fun uh, when it's because it's untethered. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on, uh, another game that's been ported. Also, uh, the dynamics really change because it's untethered is super hot uh, VR. One of your favorite games of VR in, of all time. Yes, the idea is basically bullet time. And you almost it's a shooting game, but it's also really a puzzle game. Uh, you are put through these series of action vignettes uh, where enemies are coming at you with all sorts of projectile and melee weapons. And you, as you move, time moves forward. So uh, you move slowly or judiciously to avoid them and to hit them or to shoot them and really makes you feel like you are a martial arts hero or a gun fu hero this like is in the Matrix. One of those PC ports that suffers the least visually. And these guys posted a huge blog post about how difficult it was to make this port, but nonetheless, they started with this aesthetic that translates very well to mobile. And it looks great. And they made some changes such that if even if you've played this before, you might want to check it out because now no more pyramids. You can move through the levels more than you could before. And uh, it's definitely, definitely worth your time. A real testament to the graphic capability of the, uh, the chipset in here. Another game that is new to the Quest, and it is called Shadow Point. Yeah. This is a game that um, I got to play at GDC, and at the time, to be honest with you, I couldn't hear it very well because it was on the show floor. And playing it at home with proper audio made a world of difference. Plus, I got to see a little bit more of the intro, which does some world building, and I am swept away. This might be my favorite Quest launch title. Wow. Uh, it is narrated by Patrick Stewart to great effect, but there's also other voice actors who, are, who sound equally professional and do just as much to carry the world. It's the, the mechanic is essentially holding up shapes to cast shadows, and there's, it's a puzzle game at the bare minimum. But the world that they've built almost reeks of Valve-like sentiment and quality. And I really, really appreciate and recommend this game. And with those puzzles, moving light, you're, there's a lot of like aha moments sure. um, that really make it a satisfying game. Uh, another port uh, is Job Simulator, kind of a, one of the first like killer apps for desktop VR when that launched a couple years ago. Yeah, famously, it was the biggest selling VR title uh, to date, like a year or two into the VR, um, you know, 
trend. And Job Simulator on the Quest is that same experience. So uh, it really is a great entry into how VR brings the things that you expect from the real world into a virtual space. Grabbing things, interacting with objects, with a really fun and whimsical uh, world that they've made. Yeah, I would almost say that this, if you imagine a bundled title in your VR headset, like this would be a wise choice because it, it's a great first title for anybody who's never tried VR to get into it. It, it does hold your hand, but not in a pedantic way. It's tons of fun. You know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, but you can break outside the you know the walls and you know do whatever you want. A very creative playground. I remember Job Simulator was one of the very very first things that we tried with the prototype HTC Vive uh, in that Valve demo that really demonstrated the power of having some hand presence. Yeah. And another one of those demos that has still endured is. Tilt Brush from Google. It's an right. artistic application. And with the Quest, Tilt Brush also is an uncompromised experience. In, in fact, probably it's better with the Quest than on any platform. I'm, I don't think that you can actually load in all of the PC things that you make. I think that there is a cap mm -hmm. uh, be, uh, because on the PC, you're, it's you're, so much more RAM. Exactly. Memory. You're so much you know, more free to draw more and more uh, assets. Uh, so they do limit you in that sense, but it in terms of the interface, in terms of what you can make yourself from yeah. scratch, it feels like the sky's the limit, and it really, really benefits from a tetherless experience. Yeah. I mean, you're moving through your space without any regard for direction. You're drawing, you're manipulating, and you you draw just as you you know you imagine. You you paint in three dimensions, so you're moving your hand like this. You can draw shapes in two D, but you can also you know connect lines, uh, fill in sides, you can add effects like fire and smoke and sparkles, and you can change your palette with all this. It really is a massive exper experiment in 3D interface as well. I mean, this is a, a game that, a game, an experience that has like all the complexity of something like a Photoshop, but done in a virtual reality handheld kind of experience. It's really, really novel. And if you haven't tried Tilt Brush since it launched a couple years ago, uh, there are a lot more features. You can now in incorporate uh, po polygonal models uh, to, to draw around. Uh, there's an advanced mode that lets you do some scaling of objects. Right. And, and you can teleport around, but you don't even need to do that because of course, with wireless VR, you can actually walk around your scenes and your creation. I've had people come over to my house and I've put them in games, but I've had one or two people who are just the personality types who are more attracted to creative uh, apps. Mm -hmm. When I put them in Tilt Brush, that was what sold them on VR. So definitely don't sleep on this one. Yeah. Another game that is awesome and it's been with us almost from the beginning is Space Pirate Trainer. And I've always said if every VR headset that comes out, if it's an excuse to get more people into this game, the better. Uh, I'm glad to see it on Quest. It is one of my favorites. It's, it's basically Galaxy for VR. You are standing on a platform and up come uh, waves of spaceships. And they've done a great, they did a great job last year of evolving the game and, you know, adding more types of levels and motherships and different varieties. And this is the final version and it's fantastic. You see how far you can go and try to get your name on that leaderboard as high as you can. I was really impressed by the fact that even though the graphics are toned down just a little bit, uh, they can populate the world with so many of those enemies. Yeah. And I didn't have any bit of feeling of latency or stuttering at all. The weapons still feel really, really solid. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. It's one of those games where if you're coming from the PC, you might notice a few imperfections or it doesn't exactly compare but it's good enough by far. Now, a $10 game that I think is a no-brainer uh, that was co-developed with Oculus Studios. It's from ILM X Lab, Lucasfilm. It is, of course, Vader Immortal. It's, we've reviewed this before, not necessarily a game or interactive story, but it's some type of new uh, interactive narrative in VR. Uh, it's an episodic series. This is the first of three chapters, and you enter the Star Wars universe um, and visit Mustafar and mm -hmm. encounter Darth Vader. That's really all we want to say from a plot perspective right. about it. It does have some replayability aspects too. Um, I would agree with Norm definitely on the on the uh, worth buying. It's also one of the better looking titles. Like mm. if you're looking for a title that really pushes the graphics capability of this mobile processor, for me that's one of the one that's definitely high on the list. Another title that I, we would both recommend is Big Screen. This is one that, we've, again, we've played with on the PC a lot. It was also on the go, and now they've ported it over to Quest. Um, it is basically a shared environment where you can watch um, movies together with three of your friends. 
Uh, so you invite people or you can join public rooms and you'll sit in a theater or a home theater or a living room. There's several environments to choose from and you project your computer's desktop. So on Quest, you do need to run an app on your PC and that will basically take the part of another person in the room and it gets projected onto a massive screen. Everybody can see and hear it. You can watch Netflix together. You can watch YouTube videos. You can even watch people you know, on Twitch playing Rocket League together, whatever you want to do. But it's definitely a wonderful way to share media with a group of people. It's basically a, a, a virtual chat room. Mm -hmm. And it is cross-platform. So there's a big community of people who love big screen on the desktop VR side. And if you're hosting there, you can have much bigger rooms, way more than four people. And on the mobile side, you can join those as well and, and just and embrace a bigger community of VR. That's a free application. Mm -hmm. uh, also free uh, that we would recommend is Rec Room, which is one of our favorite titles on the desktop. Uh, you enter a, a gym where you can play mini games from basketball to table tennis uh, and then jump into larger games like laser tag uh, and paintball and then eventually go on actual quests, adventures right. with a few of your friends, uh, which will be ported from the desktop side. A few of those things that Nora mentioned are our favorite experiences from the PC, but they're not yet ported to Quest. So right now it's a limited number of features. Rec Room is one of those experiences that I highly recommend. However, on the other hand, like if you're new to VR, it's a complicated, vast kind of experience. So when you're ready to spend some time in an app and really learn how to use it and dive into the community and learn what's possible, Rec Room is there for you. Like Norm said, it's free, so when you're ready to dive in, you'll have a wristwatch, and when you look at it, there'll be a menu that pops up, and you can navigate around, see what you can do. You can invite friends, if you have people that are you've already um, you know, associated with, into the same room as you, and you can become buddies. Uh, you can uh, party up party up by giving them a fist bump. You can shake hands in order to be friends permanently. And then you can go into the same rooms together, uh, paintball being one of our favorites. I will say that what we've seen so far is absolutely wonderful. We love Rec Room, but the, the frame rates are not always there on the Quest. We hope to see them iterate further on this title. And uh, we know that they plan to bring all of the other, or at least most of the other experiences, top on our list being the Quest. We know that they're coming. A couple of those are coming next month. So if you dive in there, what you're seeing right now is not the whole game. Uh, they're going to be adding more and more features as time goes by, and it's definitely worth keeping your eye on. So that's a roundup of kind of the 10, what we think are almost essential experiences at launch for the Oculus Quest. But let's also jump through some of the rest of the other 50 titles. Yeah. things that we, we think are at least worth looking at if you've played through or are interested in them. So let's start off at the high end. Also for $30 is Sports Scramble, yep. uh, which is uh, a kind of a fun take on tennis, bowling, and uh, baseball. It's a multiplayer game, but you can also play with AI. And for the tennis game, for example, you play your traditional tennis game, but then your racket or the ball can get turned into a different type of ball or a different type of racket. Uh, and that just mixes things up. So very cartoony. Uh, I loved it because it looked great and it felt great. It felt like the developers really optimized for the hardware um, and it, it was just a joy to be in. Robo Recall, another game that we are familiar with from the Rift, has now been brought over to Quest and if you do have it on the Rift already, it's cross by so it's ready to go. It's, uh, it's basically the same gameplay. It's just the graphics have been stripped down a little bit. Um, Norm, you thought maybe it didn't play quite as well. You weren't, you didn't feel it was yeah. as smooth. As yeah, I, I, I felt like you know the the graphics looked fine. Yeah, but I felt like the gameplay, especially the gun play, the gun, the responsiveness of the guns, and the the instant hitness that I felt in the PC side was yeah. a little bit taken back. It was a little bit more arcadey. Um, so I, I didn't like the gun mechanics as much. I felt like the untetheredness aspect added so much that I was willing to forgive that. It's definitely a game that benefits from untethered because while you can't face any direction when you teleport, uh, you also can turn around and it is very liberating to grab enemies around you, throw, you know, robots, you know, tear them apart, throw them at other robots, and it's it's a ton of fun. It's a very arcadey game that doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah, so we talk about sports games, action games, it's also puzzle games, and in that realm, uh, a classic VR game, I Expect You to Die, is also on Quest now. That's almost like a single player escape room where it's very cleverly designed, very James Bond spy, retro mm -hmm. spy theme, but you are in the cockpit of a submarine, you're in the seat of a car, you're in the office of a, a mastermind, and you are trying to get out of these scenarios using 
uh, interactions with the world, and I thought really, really cleverly designed and well voice acted and scripted as well. Thumper's a great game that we played on PC and Go, and now is on Quest. Glad to see it. It is a, uh, it, I forget what they call it. It's like a violent, you know, puzzle racing game. It's it's an interesting title. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's very, you know, almost psychedelic. You're you're zooming down this channel, and you have to hit the turn buttons at just the right time when you get to these uh, turns. Essentially, you also come across these gems. You have to hit the button at the right time. So it's a timing-based game, but it's also you have to stay in the zone because you start moving very fast and the things start to happen very quickly. Um, it's definitely a, an interesting game that's a, quite long, so mm -hmm. if you're looking for a lot of bang for your buck, recommend Thumper. And also a great pick up and play game if you just want to play for yeah. five or ten minutes. Uh, one of my favorite pick up and play games on the quest is Racket Fury. It's just a table tennis game. I love the physics. I love that there, there are a lot of options that you can do to configure how you hold the controller relative to how the virtual controller. Mm -hmm. And you can play against really good bots or a multiplayer against uh, Oculus Rift desktop players. And I love, the, I love table tennis and this is just a perfect five minute jump in play a couple games, yep. and jump out. Uh, there's not too many flying games on the Quest, and, but the one that really jumps out is Ultra Wings. Uh, this is a game that we've played before, and I'm glad to see it. It is uh, definitely benefits from, from six degrees of freedom. You can not just uh, move your head around now and sort of lean out the windows a little bit, but you can actually use the controls on the cool little airplanes. So it's uh, one of those more advanced titles. So if you're sensitive to motion sickness, be wary. If you want something that pushes VR a little bit, Ultra Wings might be it. It's a, a game where, by default, they have the windows kind of masked out because it's that kind of movement and sense of flight that can move you to feel that kind of sense of, of motion. But you can turn those settings off, and it can be very intense and, for me, quite pleasurable. You know, we mentioned big screen has the ability to share your desktop with other people, but a lot of people love just using the idea of a virtual desktop. Mm -hmm. And there is also an application, Virtual Desktop, on the Quest. It's $20. It's very simple. Your desktop gets piped in through your Ethernet, or through your, through your internet, mm -hmm. to uh, your mobile headset, mm -hmm. and you get to have your keyboard and interact and do 360 videos, mm -hmm. VR videos, uh, web browsing, all of that on a virtual environment. The latency is actually surprisingly low on that, and you can connect a Bluetooth uh, controller to the Quest that then gets transported to the uh, controller on your PC, and you can actually play PC games over your local area network right. using the Quest. And it's actually, it's a very compelling use case. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people pick that up just for that purpose. Now in 2019, this is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing. And so very appropriate, there's also the Apollo 11 app for Quest, which mm -hmm. is our final recommendation. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. This is one of those titles that, it, it gives you a taste of what's possible from an education standpoint in VR. Like when we read Ready Player One, there's the whole first you know, act of the, of the book where they're at school and you think, well, that's actually co really compelling. <clears throat> they can, the teachers can take their kids on field trips and they can go anywhere that they can imagine. This, you are, you are ramping up to the launch of the Apollo 11 and you are now a member of the crew. <laughs> and you go through everything in real time, you know, essentially, and it just feels remarkable. It gives you a sense that you couldn't possibly get even from watching a film. And it, it's, I love the potential for this type of experience in VR. The people who made this went on to do another title uh, all about um, Titanic. Yeah, and the potential of tetherless mobile VR is really kind of the, the opportunity for the Quest and why we're excited for this device. You know, of the launch titles, a lot of things are games that you out there who have your headsets and we've played before, it definitely feels a little different uh, being tetherless mm -hmm. and we just can't wait to see what developers who are working with the Quest are going to be putting out in the coming months and years. Uh, on the hardware side, a couple options if you want to just add on to your experience. Of course, Oculus sells a case yep. for $40. You can buy a bunch of different cases that do work with this for a little cheaper as well. They also sell some uh, headphones, uh, ear earphones, earbuds, uh, earbuds uh, for $50 as an accessory. And if you wear glasses while the Quest does fit over your glasses, there are options for prescription inserts. Uh, these were $80 uh, they can fit in. And then also the folks at VR Cover are gonna come out with a new facial interface for the Quest as well. So we'll be checking mm -hmm. that out If in you the future. also are concerned about your power, you can also get a USB battery pack, put it on your hip, run a cable up to here, and it will actually charge and let you play at the same time once you get that low battery warning. Yeah. 
All right, so that's a great starting point for the quest. We'd love to hear from you about what games you're enjoying, what experiences you've been going through. Uh, if you did pick one up this week, we'll be back next week with maybe some hardware coverage and also Augmented World Expo is next week, so a lot more to cover in the world of virtual reality and augmented reality. But thanks for watching, subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time. Bye.